we're following Jesus. And, uh, and we'll be talking about that next Sunday in a different, uh, different light. But, but our lesson today is called Choosing. And that's what I want to look at today. Choosing. Choosing to be a disciple. Now, some people don't do well with choices. If you give some people too many choices, they just get all flustered. I'm one of them. You know, don't give me a whole bunch of choices. One or two, that's about it. That's my limit. Uh, but, but if you were to ask uh, in one word to describe that word disciple, what pops in your mind? Jesus. Okay, what else? Disciple. We're talking about choosing to be a disciple. Uh, what now? Discipline. Okay, that's a good word. Any other words? Y'all hadn't said the one I was thinking yet. Come on, somebody help me out here. Servant, I like that one too. A disciple, disciple. Okay, well, I, I'm the one and only, I guess. But when I think of the word disciple, I think of the word follower. A follower. Um, that, that's, what, that, what, that's what popped into my mind. Because after all, a follower, if I said that correctly, a follower is someone who walks in the steps of another. They're being disciplined, whoever said that word, to walk like that person uh, walks. And, and, and they will serve. They will serve. They will support. And here's the, here's the beautiful word. They will obey the one that they are uh, following. You know. And so um, even some may think of the word, when you think of, uh, of disciple, you may think of the word apostle. Some, I know. Everybody don't want to say what they think because I can remember being in school and I didn't want to be the one that said something that was totally offhand, you know. You'd be, where'd you come up with that at? <laughs> I know y'all don't believe this, but in school I was very shy. I would rather take a bad grade than to stand up and give an oral book report. Isn't that pitiful to say? But you know, the Lord gives you boldness and it's called holy boldness. And so thank God for that. Of course, so there's times I feel very shy even around you guys. Y'all don't believe that. I know. Don't even, don't even try to figure that one out. But really what I'm saying is we are all human, and we all have similar thoughts and similar things that, that we, 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 you know, we are kinfolk. Right. You know. Uh, and so, but, but, but that, that word apostle is, is, means a messenger or a witness or even a companion. And so to become a disciple first, there must be this word. There must be a call from the master. Mm -hmm. And then that person, when that call is made, then that person has that choice to make, to choose whether they're going to walk in the steps of that one that has called them, <laughs> and will they take up their cross daily and follow Jesus and, you know, folks, there's been great men and women of God uh, who have made the choice to be a follower of the Lord. And, and just as a little testimony to, to this assembly here, I uh, just this past week I got a um, call, maybe it was last week or the week before this last week, a call from a pastor's wife in Jackson, Michigan, who attended the Covington United Pentecostal Church as a young teenage girl. And she was going to be in the Arkansas district. And, uh, and can I just say I'm so happily proud of this young lady. Um, she grew up here at the Covington Church. And she said, Sister Creasy, I would love to meet with you and Pastor Creasy because you all had such an influence on my life at an early stage in life. You know, sometimes you don't feel like you're doing much for the Lord. But when you get phone calls like that, it makes you so thankful yes, for whatever you've done to help anybody. Amen. And this young lady today, and I won't brag on her, she is the, she is the, what would you call it? She's over all of the ladies' ministry of the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. And she grew up at the Covington Church, but God saw fit to put her in a, in a different area. But, but she was thankful for her raise in, in the Lord. And, um, and so um, I'm just so thankful that God's, God's got a master plan. And, um, and she said, she told us this last night. She said, 
years ago, Brother Jack Chester, who is Joel's dad, prophesied over her that she would be speaking and, and ministering to hundreds of people. Guess what? Wow. Yeah. So be it. Yeah. She's, she's flying out of Arkansas today, this afternoon after she ministers this morning. She is a, a beautiful lady minister of the Lord, and she's flying to Dallas, Texas, where she's going to meet with the heads of all the, all the women ministries of ALJC, and uh, they're going to be getting things ready for however they do all that. So I don't, I don't, have, I don't have any knowledge of all that. I'm just one person, and I'm just right here in the Covington Church. But, but God called her, and I'm just so thankful for what God is doing yeah. in people's lives. I'm thankful today for the calling that people will respond to. Just as a teenage girl, yeah. she responded to the call of God, and now God has blessed her and put her in, in a beautiful position. And to God be the glory. I, I don't know how I got off on that, but anyway, I did. But I, well, I was talking about great men and women of God. That's what I was talking about. So, but, but there have been great, great people that have, have made that choice. And, and, you know, you can't think about great people without thinking of some of those in Hebrews chapter 11, can you? I mean, you just can't talk about great people without speaking about somebody in Hebrews chapter 11, that, that great chapter of faith. The Bible said in Hebrews eleven twenty four 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What's that word? Next word. Choosing. He made a choice. Uh, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure, pleasures uh, of sin for a season. So, folks, if we're going to be faithful, be a faithful disciple of the Lord, we got to make up our mind that we're going to choose the Lord over anything the world's got to offer Amen. us. That's right. yeah. Now, if I'm boring you, you can just go on and take a nap. <laughs> but I didn't come to bore you today. I came to minister today. And to let us understand that, that the decision is ours to make. You know, I can't make decisions for my children, and you can't make decisions for your children. If you could, guess what? You would, wouldn't you? You'd make, you'd make a whole lot different decisions than they're making right now in their lives. Some of us would. Am I okay with saying that? But that, that choice, that decision, it has to come from in here. And, and that makes the difference even in your walk with God. You know, you may be influenced by somebody else. You know, maybe your friends started going to church and you, you came to church because of them. Right. But it came down to a time when you had to make your own personal decision whether I'm going to live for God or, 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 you know, or just, you know, just hang around church. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's the truth. I'm feeling yeah. preachy today. Go ahead, you know, uh, and, and that's, that, that's what makes the difference uh, about our walk with God is what, what, what's inside of us. Right. Is it just an obligation to come to church and raise my hands because that's what they expect of me? Or is it because I love God with all that's within me, with every bit of fiber I've got, and I'm going to show and demonstrate my love to Him any way I can? Right. I'm, that's the choices I'm talking about. Now, I appreciate people coming to church because they're invited. But, honey, I want you to know that there's more to it than just an invitation. We've got to respond to the invitation or the calling of God. It's how we respond. It's, it's what makes the difference in our experience with God. That's right. I, 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 man, my mind's running 90 miles an hour, but, but it, it, I, I want to stay with my notes today because sometimes I find too many things to say and there's a lot of things that's important that I need to say about this lesson today. So, so uh, a, a true follower of the Lord, you know what they're going to do? They're going to count the cost. Yes, they are. And, you know, today we're going we're gonna to see how that Jesus called 12 men. And you know what he called them to do? He called them to leave everything that they possessed. And he was going to not just let them be, be what they were. They were fisher, fishers. Fishers, fishermen, okay. But he was going to make them, after their decision to follow him, to become fishers of men. Not just fishermen, but fishers of men. And so Jesus taught the people, today we're going to see from, from one of those men's boat, Luke 5 and 1. But Joe, have you ever had anybody teach a, a Sunday school to preach a lesson out of one of your boats? 
Did he really? Well, all right. All right. Was he preaching to you? All right. See, I thought he was going to say, uh-uh. Boy, did you surprise me. Good, good response. <laughs> Luke 5 and 1 says, and it came to pass, this is our lesson text today, that as the people pressed upon him, upon the Lord, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesaret. I've always, I've always called it Gennesaret. But when you listen to that wonder Bible, Sister, Sister Sue, he pronounces it Gennesaret. So I'm going to go with that. Verse 2 said, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed. Now, if you hear me say Peter, James, and John a lot today, Peter is another name for Simon. So I don't mean to whatever, but Jesus gave him that name uh, of Peter. For thou, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. Okay, so if I say that word, I'm talking about Simon. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed to him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, you know what I got out of that? The fact that, well, well let, me, let me just stay with, with, with my notes, and then I'll, I'll go there. Um, here here we're, we're looking at a multitude of people, and they're, they're pressing upon Jesus to hear the word of the Lord. Now, uh, you know, be careful because sometimes I get carried away and I, I speak before I think but but they they were so hungry and they were so wanting to hear that as they pressed upon the Lord brother Billy I believe they were getting him so close to the water that it was either he was going to have to walk on out in that water or do something to to keep himself from being pushed right out in that lake so he did the smart thing. Well, you know, he, he's all wisdom, but he just said, hey, could I borrow your boat for just a little bit, you know? So he gets in the boat. He's, he's Now he's at a distance that they can hear him, but yet not be pressing him to the point that he can't teach them. And, and you know, let me just say this. Sometimes we have to get a lot of things out of our way for the Lord to, to be able to minister to us. Okay, that's just a little tidbit that, that I want to throw in there. Uh, so, uh, th they, they were hungry. They weren't hungry for some uh, uh, steak and potatoes. No, they were hungry for that, that, that food, that, that supernatural meal. You know, that that would, would, would sustain them after, you know, you, you can eat a great old big meal and, you, you know, sometimes you, get, you find you a place where you can kind of lean back because you do, you've already ate so much. Do you feel like if you had to sit straight up, it just wouldn't work real good? But they, they, that wasn't the kind of food they were wanting. They were wanting something that even after the fullness left them, they would still have that word of God, that supernatural. And so when we get hungry for the supernatural, folks, God's going to provide just what we need. You know, what's wrong with some of us? We don't really have an appetite like we need. You know, you can't feed somebody that's not hungry. If you, do you know if you've got indigestion up to here, you can't eat a bite? Why, you're so full right here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody say, you hungry? No, I'm not hungry at all. When I was having those episodes, you know, before surgery, when I would have one of those episodes, I don't believe anything would have gone into my throat and gone down because there was so much pressure of feeling so full, but not only was I full, but I was in pain also. But but here's the thing. The natural man, the natural man, when he gets hungry, he goes looking for something in the refrigerator or the cabinets. Does it, do we not? You know, we'll open every cabinet, you know. You, and, and the pitiful part is sometimes we're hungry, don't even know what we're hungry for. It's like, man, I want something, you know. And sometimes we even have what we call the munchies. That's bad. Man, you'll eat everything you can find and still want something else. That's why I'm saying that's bad. But if we ever, I'm going to bring it on home to us now. If we ever got hungry and got the munchies for the supernatural things like we do for the natural things, I'm telling you, we would, we would see some spiritual giants around here. And I, I want to say, hey, amen, I need that, Sister Creasy. 
I, I need that. I need that that supernatural hunger. You, you see, the, the the word of the Lord, uh, the word of the Lord, uh, uh, and I'm losing my spot. I'm trying to find it. The word of the Lord. Here it is. The word of the Lord. It, it was something that they desired more than anything at that moment. Right. Uh, right. You know, last Sunday we talked about being familiar, right. getting too familiar with things. And if we're not careful, careful as church-going people, if you know where I'm coming from with this, we'll get so used to coming, sitting down, yeah. right. sticking our feet under the table, so to speak, and we'll just kind of, if we like it, oh, well, if we don't, we just pass it on over to somebody else, spiritually speaking. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Oh, that was for so-and-so. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they needed that. You know, I, I didn't need that. I, why don't he preach something different, you know? You know right. You know. Uh, and so if we're not, why? Because we don't have an appetite. Right. We're not hungry. That's it. We're full of something else. Yeah, right. right. I'm just going to let you fill in the blank there. I'm not even going there. Yeah. You're right. Hey, we can be full of worry. Right. Yeah. We can be full of doubt. Right. We can be full of worry. just plain old laziness. Right. Well, preacher's blessed I showed up today. No, honey, <laughs> you're blessed you showed up today. Right. I didn't feel to that one, did I? So, so we're talking about today, this was a people that, that, that they were so hungry, they were even pushing the one they wanted to hear from. They were pressing on him so much because they were so hungry for the word of God, they just had to get a little closer and a little closer. Right. I'm just going to say this, and I'm trying to filter it, but I'm just going to say it. I love to sit where I am not hindered from anything that's going on around me. Right. We were always taught, when the door opens, don't turn around and look who just came into church. I try not to do that. But boy, sometimes I'm thinking, is so-and-so here today? Yeah. I'm thinking, well, when I sit down, maybe I can turn a little bit and see. <laughs> yeah. Now, y'all don't do anything like that. I know. But, but what I'm trying to say is, if I can get close enough where that nothing that preacher or, or teacher is saying doesn't, you know, that I grab a hold of it. If I can keep all those little thoughts from just running through my head and I'm focused in on what they're saying, Brother Bill, when I leave here, I, I know I have been fed spiritually because I got a hold of it. Right. I didn't just pass it on over to the second pew where you were sitting. I got it. Because yeah. I'm right up here where the action is. Right. I'm, not, I'm not just, hey, I have a one-track mind. And if I'm not focused in on what you're saying to me, you can just say all kinds of stuff, and it might be real smart. But if if, if I'm if, if my mind is running in another direction, it ain't on what you're saying. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to do that, but that's just how I work. So I got to get focused in on, and that's why I come up here. I don't know why all my kids want to sit back there in that corner. I guess because I made them all sit on the front row when they was kids. They're showing me now they can sit wherever they want to. But now sometimes I think they do that because they've got kids, and I, I understand. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not totally ignorant, you know. But but <laughs> now preachers on the back row. Uh, but but here's here's my point. Oh, that we, as God's people, would begin to have some hunger pains for God's word, so that there's nothing. Okay, come on up here. Come on up here. <laughs> Hey, I know everybody can't sit on the front row. Okay, I, I, I know that. Please don't, please don't be offended at that. I'm just talking about my one track mind. I, I'm talking about me. Oh, but 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 oh, that we would we would just say, God, I've got to have more of Your Word because it's what we want. It's what we go after. Whatever we're hungry for, what our appetite is for, is what we will feed even not just the natural man, but the supernatural man. If this, if this spiritual being is not hungry, it don't matter if, if the Apostle Paul was preaching today. Right. That's right. You just ain't hungry. You're just not hungry. That's 
But God let us, as your people, develop a hunger for the Word of God, just like these people did that day in Luke chapter 5, because the Word of God teaches us blessed. Honey, when you've got an appetite for the, for the supernatural things of God, you're a blessed individual. When you walk through that door and you said, I'm coming to get something from God's word today, and you've got a made-up mind, I don't care if you're sitting on the back row with a half a dozen two- and three-year-olds right around you, you're focused on one thing, and that's what you come to get, a word from God. Amen. And it, it doesn't matter what the distraction is. I've got my mind made up. I'm going to get something from God today. I'm not going to leave here like I came. My heart and soul is going to be full of the word of God. Amen. Blessed are they that which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. What's the promise? For they shall be what? Filled. That's Matthew 5 and 6 if yeah. you want to refer to that later. So these people that day had pushed aside other things. Oh, you down down that right there, preach. Yeah, they had pushed aside other things mm -hmm. from their day, and they were even pushing, no doubt, other people out of their way. Why? Because they were hungry for the word of God. See, hunger will give us and move us to the place that, that we're going to do something. Hunger will cause us to get a little anxious about our situation. Have you ever been so hungry you think, I just, Esau was, I just, if I don't get something to eat, I'm just going to fade away. Yeah. Anybody ever felt that way? I have felt that way naturally. And spiritually, God, I've just got to hear from you this day. If, 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 if we would just begin to have that, that desire, that hunger for God's word, because that's what it takes to be fed. Right. Just simply get hungry. Right. Pastor says, boy, that's deep, ain't it? <laughs> now, some of us can eat anything we want. I mean, some of y'all can eat anything you want to, and you it don't affect you at all in the natural. But some of us right. can eat a piece of carrot cake and get on the scales tomorrow, and you have, I have gained two pounds. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I think that cake wasn't near as good as it was last night. <laughs> But, but let's think about it in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Yeah. If, we would, if we would ingest the spiritual things yeah. and it would affect us yeah. like the natural food does. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Praise God. Spiritually speaking, spiritually speaking, we'd be ready to go out against the liar. Spiritually speaking, we'd be ready to do whatever God called us to do. Here I am, Lord. I just had me some spiritual food, and I'm ready, Lord. What, what do you want me to do? What would you have me to do, Lord? Okay, I, I know. I'm, 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 I'm putting too many words. That's not in my notes. But, but, but here's the thing. As their spiritual hunger began uh, to push Jesus even into a place of physical, the writer said danger, but. He's God. Right. But he, he here's, here's, here's the point it is. He, he had a solution for the situation. Right. Folks, when we get God in our hearts and lives, I'm going to say it to me, and you just listen, like I need him, right. more of him. Whatever the situation, God's got my solution. Amen. And folks, if I ever, I, I just, I, I kind of feel like, I need to do what Peter did. Yeah, right. Step out of the boat right. Yeah, right. in faith. Right. Instead, sometimes we just want to say, okay, go ahead, Peter. You go ahead and jump out of that boat. I'm going to stay right in here. <laughs> we, we, we like that safety net of being, you know, where we feel like... I, but, folks, I believe God's looking for somebody that will get out of, the, of, the, of their comfort zone and get into a place with him that says it doesn't matter what comes or goes. I'm going to put my trust in Jesus Christ, and, and he's the one that's going to see me through this situation. He's got the answer I need. I don't know the answer, but, Jesus, you've got the answer. Let's see. There used to be a song that said Jesus is the answer. 
for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Thank you, Pastor. That was false. Jesus is the way. Okay, so so he he had the answer that day. He just asked uh, Simon to let him use his boat, and, and so uh, here we see the the scripture. The fact is, the scripture scripture the word of God it will draw those who desire to know God and to know His word. That day at, that that the crowd came to hear the words of the Lord, they came because. They were hungry to hear God's word. Nobody told them, you got to go down there and you got to hear that man. No, that wasn't why they came. They didn't come because somebody made them come. They wanted to come. They wanted to come. Do you know when I was a kid, my mama made me go to church? <gasps> oh! And I am so thankful she did. Because I was just like any other kid. I'd rather stay in bed on Sunday. I didn't have to get up and go to school. But you didn't, you didn't stay in bed. My mama wasn't a preacher. My mama wasn't a preacher's wife. But she was a good old saint of God that knew I needed to get my carcass up out of that bed and go hear the word of the Lord. And I don't think, I don't think, I thank her for that. People say, well, they don't know to make their own decision. Baloney. They still eating your bread? You still putting a roof over their head? And I'm not going to go there, but you know what I'm, you know. That's what the devil wants people to think. Well, you can't make them serve God. No, you can't. But you can take them to where they can hear the word of God. Some of you did that, didn't you? You youngins ain't in church today. Don't you fret. God's got their number. God knows where they're at. You did the right thing. Don't you let the devil tell you anything different. You did the right thing. Of course, at the Creasy house, it wasn't a question. They knew better. You know, we, we're supposed to be here. We're the preacher's kid and wife, you know. <laughs> but here's the thing. I wanted to be here. This is where I come to get my spiritual food. You know, I don't like diets, do you? And I sure don't want to diet on the Lord. Is that all right, Bud B? That little girl coming down from Michigan got me all stirred up, y'all. Let me just tell you right now. She just put a little, blew, blew some wind into my sails or something. I'm feeling preachy today, I'll tell you right now. So, so <laughs> when, when the Lord began to speak the word of God, that message just came alive to them people. Because here's what was happening. They were getting closer and closer to the Lord. And what that tells me today, folks, is the closer that we are to the Lord, the more the Bible or the Word of God is going to come alive to us as we read it. Right. You know, the Bible said the people pressed upon him to hear the Word of God. Right. There was an appetite there that day. Right. You know, they wanted to be on the front line. They wanted to be the closest to him, where that none of the things that he said would, would fall from their ears. But here's the thing. In Luke 5 and 4, the Bible said, Now when he had left speaking, there came a time when he was through, he said unto Simon, that's Simon Peter, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, I believe he put it, I believe that was a questionable master. Master? We have toiled. In other words, they had worked all night, all night, throwing those nets out there. Now, don't you know, Brother, Brother Joey, they weren't just doing that for their health. They was doing that because that was their way of making a living. Right. And they stayed at it all night doing what they thought was going to bring them some results. Right. And here he's saying to the Lord, we've toiled all night and have taken not one thing, nothing. They knew how to fish. They knew where to go. They'd been there before. But for some reason, I know the reason. I know the reason. God was getting them ready. God was getting them ready to hear a call that they wouldn't have heard if, if they, here's the thing, if they'd have brought in all those fish, they wouldn't have been there, they wouldn't have still been there. Right. 
They've been down there selling those fish. They admit God had them on location for what he was fixing to do. I'm just going to tell you, I just think this. Now, you, you tell me, Sister Chris, you don't have to think so much, do you? But I think the Lord has a harder time getting us on location. Amen. I really do. Because we all the time crawfishing. Instead of saying, here am I, Lord, we all the time back, back paddling, going the other way, giving God all the reasons why we can't. Y'all ain't want to give me talk, are right? you? But here it's, here, here's, here's, here's the beautiful words that, that Simon said. Simon Peter said, Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. They probably had never had this to happen before. When God's on the scene, things happen that never happened before. Oh, oh. I'm telling you, if, if I ever wanted that childlike faith, I want it in this day and hour that we're living in. Amen. Listen, we hear enough negativism. I said we hear enough negative thoughts. We need to turn off some of that negative stuff, and we need to turn into some positive thinking today. And that positive thinking is going to be in the good word of God. So they, when, when they had obeyed the Lord, the Bible said in verse 7, and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship, that was James and John in that other ship, by the way. That they should come and help them. And they came and filled, uh, are you looking at this? Yeah. And filled both, both boats. Woo! What a catch, Brother Cody. What a catch, Brother Harry. Wouldn't you guys like to go fishing one in one boat, one in the other, and come home with both boats full? Yeah. You'd say, well, look at here, Jessica. And Robin, what happened to us today? Jesus got in our ship. <laughs> hey, when Jesus is anywhere, everything's better. So, so uh, uh, when Simon Peter, they're, they're both of those words together. When, when Simon Peter saw it, did I get the rest of that verse? I didn't, did I? I'm so sorry. And they beckoned unto the partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Now, I don't know what that tells you, but, but Joy, that tells me they caught so many fish that the, the boat was not able to, com to, to comfortably carry it back to the boat. God don't just do little things. He does things in multiple ways. And unto him who is able. Y'all know that. Amen. To do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask God. Our thing. You know what I think is wrong with some of us sometimes? We quit asking. Amen. I'm going to say that again. What's wrong with some of us is we just quit asking. We've listened to the negative thoughts long enough that we quit listening to God and we just quit asking because the devil said it ain't going to happen. So just hush asking. And that's what he wants us to do. We need to do some pounding with that praying and say, it don't matter what you say, devil. Everything you say is a lie. But my God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. yes. I know. I should not holler. I know. I know. I should not holler. Please Good. forgive me. I'm sorry. Because I already told y'all if you didn't want to listen, you could take a nap. And here I am hollering, waking you up. That's, I'm sorry. Again, I'm sorry. Uh, so, so uh, when Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord. He got that part right. He, he, he was Lord. He was Lord. Look at this word. For he was astonished. And all that were with him at the draft of the fishes, 
which they had taken. Not only did the Lord come to speak words of life to these people that day, but he came with power to meet the real needs of the people. His message was to bring a transformation. He moved directly from speaking uh, uh, to addressing, uh, you know, from just speaking, but he, he went to addressing Peter's failure. Uh, and it was that he had failed to catch any fish all night. Can anybody say, I have failed the Lord? But God wasn't focusing on the fact that he failed. But God was focusing, the Lord was focusing on Peter that day. And he told Peter, you may have failed, but I've got, I've got a new, I've got something for you to do right now. Right. You may have failed, but listen, Peter, there's hope and there's help for you. If you'll just launch out into the deep and go fishing one more time, because this time you're going to catch more fish than your nut net can handle. Right. Peter didn't have any trouble letting Jesus use his boat to sit in and teach the people from. I didn't hear what you said. She's supposed to be on quiet. I ain't talking to you late. Look, it's all quiet, y'all. Why is she doing that to me? Did y'all hear her say? Uh -huh. I am so sorry. <laughs> so, so, uh, he didn't have any trouble letting the Lord sit in his boat to teach people. But he did have a problem with the Lord telling them to go fishing again, didn't he? Yeah. You know, some things we tolerate. And we can say, yeah, yeah, that's okay. But sometimes when the Lord gets right in our Kool-Aid with what he wants us to do, we have a little trouble being obedient. Amen. They, these men, they had just cleaned their nets, folks from an all-night excursion of fishing. They're tired, and, and, and they wanted to go home. They wanted to rest. They wanted to get some sleep because, you know, it, it's time to do that. But at that moment, Peter didn't realize who he was doubting when the Lord told him what he was going to catch uh, uh, that day was going to be a multitude of fish. But, but he had to do something. He had to do what God told him to do. If we expect the blessings from God, you know, we say, God, do this, God, do that. But, folks, if we expect God to bless us, there's some things we got to do. Now, the Lord could have just spoke the words that, all right, all you fish that's out there, jump on the, uh, jump on the land. He could have said that. But there's some things we got to do for ourselves. First of all, we got to hear the word of God. Second of all, we got to obey the word of God. Then third, we got to do the word of God. Because if we don't do that, then it doesn't matter what God tells us to do. The blessings are not going to come our way. Our problems, we can hear it. We can say amen to it. But when the preacher wants us to put it into action by coming on up here and receive what God's got for us, we say, well, I'll just wait till the next evangelist comes along. Then I'll get what I need yeah. from God. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's just Brother Creasy. I've heard him preach that message before. Well, yeah, 40 years. I've heard him preach a few of them. Time for it too. But it's still rich and it's still the word of God. It's still just as good today as it was yesterday. <laughs> so, Peter didn't realize who he was doubting when the Lord told him that he was going to catch that multitude of fish. So, that, that late uh, Gennesaret uh, there they had been out there all night on that lake, and they hadn't caught. I don't. I don't even believe they caught. I, I ain't even sure they even got a minnow. Right. A, a minnow. Did I say that right? Y'all looked at me like, what was that word? I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think they caught a minnow in the net that night. You know, I'm. I'm just speculating. But but now Jesus is telling them, uh, if you will just do what I'm telling you to do. There's there's the key right there. Right. Right. <laughs> Do what I'm telling you to do. You're going to catch more fish than this boat can hold and the one beside it. Now, he didn't say all that. I'm telling you that because that's exactly what happened. Why do we find ourselves doing the same thing that Peter did that day? Why do we find ourselves questioning the word of the Lord? But don't we do it? Aren't we guilty? Amen. 
But Jesus was working a plan in the life of these men that was going to change their lives forever. And when we can't see what God is doing in our lives, you can be assured of one thing. He's doing something. You may not be seeing it, but God's working. If you're praying and you're asking, he's going to come through. Ask. Seek. Knock and it shall be open unto you. We've got to do our part. God will do the rest. But we got to let God by being obedient to the word of God. And so sometimes, um, sometimes, did, did I say this? When we do what the master tells us to do, we can be assured that it will be just like he, the word, like he said it would. Did I say that already? You don't know if I said it or not. But here's the thing. Sometimes, here's the problem. You want to hear what the problem is? Sometimes we, we like Peter, Simon Peter. We get weary and we get tired. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. Sometimes we're naturally tired. Amen. It, it, you know, especially folks that's been sick, been down and out. Look at here. I was only down for just a little while going to sleep there in that hospital. And when they got me up to walk me, I'm like, I, I thought, are these legs going to hold me up? I know how to walk. But there's something about that situation that puts you to thinking, where did my strength go? Uh huh. Spiritually speaking, sometimes we get put under. The old enemy attacks us. And then when we try to use our spiritual walking legs, sometimes we feel a little wobbly. But you know what you got to do? That young man that was helping me walk and that other person that was pushing that IV pole, they said, you want to stop now? I said, no. I want to walk a little further. Because I knew if I kept walking, but as a bonnet, my strength was going to come back in my legs. Never mind that I'd had an epidural and I had been put sound asleep. I knew what I needed to do to get that, get that work process working again. Folks, that's, I'm, what I'm telling you today in the spiritual realm is we can't afford to sit down on the Lord just because things don't go our way, just because the enemy gave us an up, up, uppercut under our chin and we felt a little days. Days, Folks, you've got to get on your walking shoes and get to walking. Amen. When you don't feel like walking, you get up and walk. When you don't feel like praying, you pray anyway. You say, I can't kneel down and pray like I used to pray. That's okay. God can hear you if you're sitting on your couch. Don't fret over that. You just keep praying. You just keep doing what you know to do. And after a while, you're going to feel, feel that spiritual strength come into your, mm, to your spiritual being. And all the things the devil said you can't do, you're going to be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Whew, I wish somebody just shout, amen. amen. I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, I know. Mm, mm. And now the Lord is telling these tired and weary men, go back to that same place where you've been throwing those nets at and you do it one more time. He didn't just say, just, shoot, just, just push that boat out a little ways. He said, launch out into the deep. Now, I don't know how far they had to go. I think another word for the, uh, that they used for the lake, uh, Gennesaret, was also the Sea of Galilee. So maybe this lake was a, what they call a pocket off of that Sea of Galilee. In other words, I, I believe they had to go a little further than just a little ways. You know, if we're going to do anything for God, folks, we got to jump in with all we got. Right. If you're going to be a successful disciple of the Lord, you're going to have to give God 100%. Right. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't liking that. I can tell. I ain't giving any amens on that. You can't just. Come on. I said, I'm filtering it right now. You just can't give God lip service. You, you want to go ahead? I know. You know, we just can't say, Praise the Lord, I love you. Well, God knows if we love Him or not, He knows if we are really. Hungry for what we say we're hungry for. Wow. You, you know what we don't don't give him a heart attack. But you know what almost probably make him have a heart attack is if all of us came in here tonight 
And we were just like on ready. Come on, preacher, preach to me. Yeah. Come on, pastor. If every time somebody said something, we was lifting our hands and shouting, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. And if some of us would just take off one, and, and some of us would act like we were holy rollers one more time, and we just get beside ourselves, never minding what's going on, never minding if you like that song they're singing or not, but you just worshiping God because you love God. Yeah. Come on. I need to calm down, though. I know. I'm just saying, get outside of what our normal routine is and get on fire for God. Launch out into the deep. What's in the deep? What we need is in the deep. It's not around the shallow water where it's muddy and yucky and you just sink up. You need to get out there where you can swim, amen, spiritually speaking, and let the Spirit of God just overwhelm you until you are just lose yourself in the spirit because that's where the blessings are when we launch out into the deep that's where the big catch is thank you Pat. so 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 we just have to have that same are you ready for this come on now are you ready please say you're ready we just have to have that same spirit of submission that Peter demonstrated that day when he said these words Nevertheless, at thy word, thy word I, will, I, will, I will, I will, I will. Can we say that together? I, I will. will, I will. Not Brother Billy will. I'm picking on you today. I'm calling your name a lot. It's okay. You look at mighty amen to me for some reason. I just keep it. <laughs> Not just pastor, but I will. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, I'm ready. I will, I will. Oh, Lord, y'all know I got six more pages? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Look at and, and here's, the, here's the, as Pastor says, here's the kicker. It wasn't really because Peter really wanted to do this extra fishing that he did it. I'm not sure his heart was in it. What do you think? No, I don't think so. if, if he had fished all night. But, but Joe, if you've been fishing all night... And, and you got everything, you know, ready. You, you ready to get in that blue Ford and take off, you know, with that boat behind you. You know, you, you ain't thinking about fishing some more. You got your mind on going home. Now, Peter's mind was on going home, I think. He, he's sure not going to the market to make any money. So his heart really wasn't in it too much. But, but here's, here's the difference. Uh, the difference was the fact that the Lord told him to do it, and if he did it, there's a blessing in it. Right. That's right. That's the whole idea of whatsoever he saith unto you, do it, do it. Do it. Because there is a blessing in it. Yes, amen. Right. Yes. Do y'all believe what I'm saying? Sure. Amen. Am I completely boring you? Sure. Please look amen, even if you don't feel amen. Look at the results of Peter's obedience. When, and when, verse 6, 5 and 6. And when they had done, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. It was just a simple act of obedient, obedience that brought this beautiful blessing. And the thing that they couldn't do on their own, folks, they were able to do it when Jesus spoke the word and when they had obeyed the word. There's things you're trying to do on your own and you can't do it. I said you can't do it. But when you surrender it to God and, God, and you get hungry for God to speak into your spirit and you hear what God is saying, and you obey that word of God, that's where the obedience to the word of God will bring the blessings of the Lord. I believe y'all all looking amen right now. Amen. So what a revelation, what a miracle, what a miracle that they witnessed that day when they submitted and when they obeyed the word of God. I don't know what that does to you. But you know what it does to me? It tells me the things that I'm praying about. There's bound to be more that I need to be doing 
in hearing the word of God. Because if I will just hear the word, the word will tell me what I need to do. And when I hear it and I obey it, then God is going to do what I've asked him to do. It's just a simple one plus one equals two. When I hear, when I listen, when I obey, then the blessings of God are going to come my way. Amen. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow thereof. If we will only do, and look, I, I hadn't even got really to the lesson yet. So here, here's, here's, here's what we got to understand. Uh, when, when, when they, uh, I, I can't even preach about when when Peter fell at the knees of Jesus and repented, but but, but I'm gonna tell you he did. And, and 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 here's the thing I need to tell you: if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, so it was Peter's response to the word and the work of the Lord uh, that was was right on target. And and after seeing the miracle of all the fish that the Lord had helped him to bring to land, the Bible said he was astonished. And that word means to be to strike with sudden fear or wonder. Peter wasn't the only one that got astonished, all that were with him, they were stricken with that same sudden fear and wonder. Uh, and, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee. All of those were astonished because God had done it. I'm telling you, there's greater things that God wants to do in the church of Co at Covington, Tennessee. I said there's greater things that God wants to do. And if we want to be fishers of men, it's time we start listening to what thus said the word of the Lord. It's time we begin to step out by faith, obey what God said, and we're going to see a multitude of fishes. Amen. Being brought in. Why? Because we've done what God's word tells us to do. And when we obey God from the heart, amen, God's going to make the difference. He's going to be, he's going to be glorified. These men show us just how to be a disciple. The first thing is they forsook all. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. You know, the first thing I wondered, Brother Billy, did they leave all those fishes on the shore that day? The Bible said, what did the Bible say? The Bible said in Luke 5 and 11, they forsook all. What do you suppose they did? I'll just leave that as a question. They left everything there that day. They walked away from their income. They walked away from their social identity. They walked away from their established business reputation. They walked away from a stable financial future. And they left it all to do what? To follow Jesus. Folks, our lesson today is this. The Lord said in Matthew 4, 19, he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Got anybody that wants to be a disciple today that want to follow the Lord? My God, I, I, I feel revival within me today. I feel a hunger, Brother Joy Ballard, to go out and not to just go fishing for, for fish, but I feel a hunger to go out fishing for souls. Somebody's hungry today, and you may be the one that they're looking for that's going to come by and speak to them what they need to hear, amen, to be saved. God, God calls. Many are called, but few are chosen. You know why? Because there are those that don't choose to follow the Lord. Instead, they follow the ways of the world. So Jesus calls people from all walks of life. He, he, he's calling today. And you know what? He's no respecter of persons. He, he called not only Peter, James, and John. He called also a, a tax collector by the name of, of Levi that was also known as Matthew. He called him. And, and, and if we could go on through the rest of the lesson, I can name all, all 12 of the disciples that he called. But here's the thing. God has a specific calling for each of us. He said he's going to give us power after the Holy Ghost is on us. And we're going to be witnesses of him. And, and, and he's also given us everything that we need. 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4 says... Uh, and everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. Uh, folks, it's not that God hasn't equipped us. It's what are we doing with what God has equipped us with. Uh, are we sitting down on God or are we getting out and we're fishing for men? Uh, amen. Are we content to just sit on the pew or we're saying, God, I got to get out and help somebody know about you today, Lord. I got to not just be satisfied that I got the Holy Ghost. Uh, Lord, I got to tell somebody. Uh, I got to stop. I got to tell somebody what the Lord has done for me. Uh, it's time 